I'm Ben Miller, a scientist who's researched in half a dozen academic labs. I interned at BU, Northwestern, and then went to Columbia and got my degree. I even spent a year teaching on a science bus. But I gave it all up to pursue stand-up comedy. And now, I'm combining my passions into stand-up science. One day, my sixth grade teacher walked into class and asked, How do you know when you go to sit down that your chair won't break? And this question has ruined my life. I started thinking, well, she's right. I mean, we live in such an uncertain world. It could just break or collapse at any moment. I mean, how do we know anything for certain? I spent weeks being terrified of chairs, not sitting, just hovering over them. I didn't realize it was possible to get PTSD from a question. She later told us the answer is that you don't know, you just have faith in the chair. And all those weeks of hovering over chairs didn't give me faith, but it did give me abs. Although sometimes, faith does give you abs. As a kid though, I realized that you're not trusting the chair, you're trusting the engineer who built the chair. And I'm not going to trust some dude in a lab coat to make a chair for me. The only person I can trust is myself. So I went out and I got a degree in material science and engineering and became that dude in a lab coat. From that day in sixth grade, it has taken me 10 years to figure out why a chair doesn't just break. I told you, this question has ruined my life. Hello class, welcome to Sit Down Science. Today I'm going to explain to you how chairs work and hopefully save you a decade of your life. But before we get into it, we need to discuss rocks. I, I know a lot about rocks. Did anybody else not have a lot of friends when they were growing up? <laughs> yeah, you know, because like, friends come and go, but rocks are around for millions of years. <laughs> yeah. and it, it's sort of annoying because the only people that know about rocks are scientists and uh, white women that think that they're witches. <laughs> only two groups of people. And all these women are like, ah, oh, these rocks have these great like metaphysical properties. They're like, no, they have very real physical properties based in science. Yeah, but I, I, I make fun of them. But also sometimes science can be like a little bit stupid too. Like there's this one scale in science uh, to tell how good a rock is essentially if one rock can scratch the other rock, it's the better rock. <laughs> That science just does rock scratch. It's called like a Mohs hardness test and use that as opposed to like a strength test. We need to like pull something apart until it breaks. And did you ever watch like the World's Strongest Man competition when that was on TV? It's a bunch of like big beefy dudes, they would be like pulling airplanes with their teeth and then you'd be on your couch like, oh, that guy wasn't fast enough. That's, that's what you'd say. Yeah, but if they want to have like a real world Strongest Man competition, they'd literally have to pull these men apart until they break. Because what doesn't kill you doesn't make you stronger. What kills you determines exactly how strong you are. <laughs> Yeah, but so in order to do like a real World Strongest Man competition without the loss of life, I feel like what we should do is have like a World's Hardest Man competition, where we rub two men against each other and see who's the hardest. That's... It's hard science. The comparison I was making in the clip was between destructive and non-destructive testing of materials. Now chairs can be made from all sorts of materials like metal, plastic, wood, or even electricity. Chairs can be tested in multiple ways, but before understanding the primary test used for chairs, we need to understand various types of mechanical testing and their uses. In order to get an idea of something's ultimate strength, you need to physically break it, which is not always the ideal thing to do. Imagine you were about to take off on an airplane, and you heard over the intercom, Ch Hello, this is your captain speaking. Before takeoff, we're just going to perform a short wing test. Please, everyone, remain calm. Now we know exactly how strong the wings are. This type of test is a bit extreme. It doesn't really reflect how chairs are used on a daily basis. It's more like how chairs are used in a wrestling ring. There are also non-destructive tests that can be performed, such as a hardness test. Hardness tests can be performed on any of the materials that chairs are made from, such as wood seen here. Now, the scientific definition of hardness is local resistance to mechanical deformation, which I think that you should all try to incorporate into your dirty talk. Like, uh, hey baby, you really uh, increased my local resistance to mechanical deformation, if you know what I mean. Although I should caution, if you're experiencing an increase in local resistance to mechanical deformation lasting longer than four hours, you should talk to a doctor. 
but this type of test is a bit too specific to get an idea of how a whole chair works. When testing the strength of chairs, it's important to understand how it responds to repeated use, so fatigue tests are performed. Now, fatigue is a fracture that occurs due to the repeated cycles of stress under a force that wouldn't normally cause a material to break. It's like when a five-year-old asks, are we there yet? Sure, you can answer the question once, but if every five minutes they're asking you, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Eventually you're gonna break and say, if you ask that question one more time, I will turn this car around, which is a ridiculous thing to do because I'm a fully formed adult and should be in control of my emotions. Now a similar thing happens to materials. The most basic test used is a vertical load test seen here. The test begins with a 200 pound load that is applied and then removed 20 times per minute for a total of 25,000 times. After 25,000 successful sits, the load is increased by 100 pounds each time all the way up to 1,300 pounds. 1,300 pounds is used to make sure that the chair can hold your weight and the crushing weight of existence that's upon us at all times. But there are many other ways for a chair to be fatigue tested, so let's take a look at some clips. The footage is sort of disturbing to be honest. It feels like Guantanamo Bay for chairs, like they're using enhanced and chair irrigation techniques. I'm just saying, I think we should treat these seats a bit more charitably. Also, this is what science thinks that your butt is. Now I call that making an assumption. Okay, last pun. I promise it's the last pun. They say that science isn't cool or sexy, but look at that. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's really increasing my local resistance to mechanical deformation, if you know what I mean. So now you know how chairs are tested, and hopefully you feel a little bit more comfortable the next time you sit down. Thanks so much for listening, class. I hope you learned something today. As always, my sources are in the description, and feel free to leave a comment about that robot butt, because you're a sick pervert on the internet, and that's what you're into, isn't it?